some of my work with you. So basically, uh, I was asked to speak about uh, transgenic sugarcane, and I would like to share our view about what to do with a transgenic sugarcane today. And of course, this is from our perspective, which is the small slash mid-side um, uh, genetic improvement organization. So I'll start by introducing NA058060. This is the most planted sugarcane cultivar today in northern Argentina. As every other commercial sugarcane cultivar, NA058060 ultimately derives from a cross between two different species. One of them being Saccharum officinarum, noble canes, native originally from uh, New Guinea, and this is uh, Lahaina officinarum in the picture, uh, from a picture of uh, Herbery in Hawaii. And uh, also to a plant that you know in India, uh, which is uh, Saccharum spontaneum. Uh, it's also called Cans here in India. It's a wild species. It's distributed throughout Southeast Asia. So this process of uh, repeatedly crossing noble canes with wild canes was called nobilization. It's a recurring series of crosses between spontaneum and officinarum, with officinarum being the recurrent parent. Um, this picture from Angelique Don's laboratory shows you how Officinarum and another species, Saccharum robustum, are actually the same species, whereas a wider range of uh, genes are observed and markers are observed in Saccharum spontaneum in orange in the picture. So any hybrid would have to be more or less within the area between these two. Uh, uh, species like the ones that are marked as outlayers in uh, in the square. So also from Angelique Don's lab uh, is showing that Saccharum hybrids. This image showing that Saccharum hybrids are polyploid, anoploid, and their gen genomes are large and complex. And I'm showing you this because it has to do with what I'm going to show you down the road in this presentation. And I start by this. Because of this genetic complexity, and also because of some characteristics of the crop itself, cane breeding, as represented in this flow chart from Chakra's breeding perspective, is labor and resource intensive. Uh, there are many decisions to be taken, many measurements, and uh, a lot of work. So luckily, uh, sexual propagation is only used for breeding and it's not used for uh, vegetative, uh, uh, sorry, for uh, commercial propagation as other crops as corn, soybeans. So sugarcane transformation happened uh, in 1992 in Robert Birch's lab. He enabled then efforts of genetically engineering sugarcane from there on. The technology that he developed more or less uh, is the basis for everything we did down the road, even if there are some modifications that included agrobacterium, transformation, electroporation protocols, and so on. So I'm going to show you a few examples of what's being done, interestingly, from the application perspective in different uh, work groups. Uh, in South Africa, uh, Sandy Snyman's laboratory in Sasri. Uh, genetically engineered sugarcane resistant to the glufosinate uh, herbicide and showed uh, useful characteristics in field trials. This has also been done by other people uh, in the case of glyphosate resistance. Uh, here I'm showing you uh, 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 an Asir's uh, group work in Turkey uh, with glyphosate tolerant sugarcane. In Brazil, there's an interesting case, uh, a little bit about this down, uh, in the coming slides. There's a BT sugarcane you probably know about. It's uh, resistant to Diatria saccharalis, the main uh, plague in, uh, insect plague in Brazil, and uh, fairly reasonable damage control in BT sugarcane against the same variety with no BT gene. 
Also, Robert Birch's lab had shown a case of disease resistance. In this case, uh, leaf skull. This is really far away from commercial, though. And also far away from commercial are some, F well, this is contradictory. But anyway, uh, resistance to abiotic drought and saline stress, which has been tested in several places. In Brazil, they also demonstrated that sugar is free of DNA and protein traces. This may not have been any news for many of us, but it is important from a regulatory perspective. And in this uh, chart, you can see where in the extraction process for sugar, you get rid of DNA and where you get rid of proteins as well. And uh, so genetically modified sugarcane was approved in several uh, countries. So I'm going to go by time. Uh, basically, here in uh, Indonesia, the first transgenic sugar came released from 1911 uh, to, uh, sorry, 2011 to 2013, with uh, some approval for feed in, uh, in 2018. And these were done with a glycine betaine gene, which is supposed to protect against uh, um, uh, drought stress tolerance. Uh, there's not much publications about this regarding the effectiveness of this trait, but here it is. In Argentina, uh, Estación Experimental Agroindustrial Obispo Colombres uh, has transformed also sugarcane with a glyphosate tolerance gene. It, it had approval for food and feed, but has no approval for growth because the Argentine industry thought they were not ready for uh, commercial sugarcane at the point they were trying to release this, which was 2015. So, and then in Brazil. In Brazil, from 2017 to currently, there's been a series of releases of CRY1AB, BT gene, in different varieties from CTC. Uh, they have obtained different sorts of approvals. Uh, and this cane is being grown in the field, and the forecast for 2022-23 was 70,000 hectares to be planted with this variety. I have no record of this being uh, accomplished and no forecast for 23-24 uh, year. But anyway, this is what we're standing today. So where do we go now with this news? So in Chakra, uh, we, just to tell you a little bit about us, uh, is a non-profit organization. We're focused on sugarcane variety development for the provinces of Jujuy and Salta, and this is the northern tip of Argentina. So basically in this pie, we're presenting a little bit more than our sustaining area, and by sustaining I mean uh, mills that pay for our F research efforts. And uh, our varieties are adopted uh, as of 2022 in about 62% of the hectares. This is increasing since at least 2020 and earlier on as well. And we believe we may go up by in the next coming years. So Chakra is kind of uh, gained some reputation because of the adoption of the NA5679 cultivar back years ago in South America, particularly in Brazil. So it was one of the most planted cultivars. NA varieties are demanded as parental genotypes in breeding programs international, so we're quite active on variety exchange programs, germplasm exchange programs, I mean. So initially in Chakra, we started our genetic engineering program, focusing as one of the main traits, uh, virus resistance. This is the case for mosaic. We did a uh, reasonable amount of work regarding identifying uh, mosaic virus populations, generating transgenic constructs for resistance to mosaic, and generated a lot of transgenic events, uh, 400 events, uh, putatively resistant to mosaic, and they were tested in field trials. And we came up with something interestingly resistant, which uh, after 
12 years of the trials uh, kept uh, resistance. And these were three uh, um, GM events. This is done through kind of uh, very well-known technology called RNA interference or um, uh, DNA silen uh, RNA silencing. And uh, this is done through a mechanism looking more or less what uh, I'm showing you here in this cartoon. But I'm going forward to the next trait that we're starting with, working with, which is glyphosate tolerance. Uh, we developed glyphosate tolerance in chakra back in uh, uh, 2000, and uh, the field performance and trade efficacy assessments identified one event that sustained its performance during multi-environment trials. And this is for cutting a long story short. We started building a regulatory dossier addressing biosafety issues, including trade performance, stability, witness potential, traceability, and we're uh, submitting our uh, dossier by early 2024 in our new attempt to release a transgenic variety in Argentina. Through this process, we have gained some engineering, trade development, and regulatory science know-how that we think will facilitate developing further GM events from new cultivar donors, constituting a sustained and current biotechnology product pipeline. The acquired know-how and future lines of work in transgenic sugarcane at Chakra will involve developing insect-resistant constructs via multiple mode of actions, and this will be stuck to uh, herbicide resistance. We'll optimize our product design uh, we have learned that early molecular characterization of GM events may facilitate uh, and easy some headaches that we had down the road uh, in the previous efforts. And uh, we think we'll notably reduce a regulatory time frame based upon the experience that we gather, both in trade development, dossier building, and also by developing analytical methodologies. So we're also uh, playing around with uh, genome editing. Uh, we had some work published in the last, uh, will be published, sorry, in the next uh, coming issues of Sugar Journal. We're looking at uh, herbicide resistance as well. In this case, AHAS gene-based herbicide resistance for imidazolinone, sulfonylurea, and other herbicide types. This requires uh, some fine-tuning of homology-directed repair to achieve functional knock-ins in the ALS genes. So, so far, what we've managed to do is mess with the gene in the right place, but we haven't got the modifications that we needed. We need to fix this. We need to find new DNA-free uh, transformation protocols and also selection of transformed plants for this uh, herbicide resistance. It's a lot of work, but uh, we're there. Other lines of biotechnology work are easy. They're kind of byproducts of what we've learned so far. One of the things that we're doing is doing a new cultivar improvement based on some clonal variation. So we know that many varieties increase their stock number after transformation, and it's not because of the transformation per se, but because of the... Um, uh, um, uh, some clonal variation that occurs upon embryogenic uh, roots of development. Uh, like this, you can increase stock number. You won't increase the total cane yield, but you will improve a lot of uh, interesting traits together with the stock number. We're applying this to some varieties. For some varieties, it doesn't work well at all. We're also uh, applying a massive in vitro propagation facility targeting, at this point, about two million of high quality clean cane seed per year. So, as for conclusions, our future developments in sugarcane genetic engineering will be shaped by biotechnology as well as industrial and market developments in the industry. Because these developments occur at a rather fast speed, Implementing adequate technologies based upon accurate anticipation of industry scenarios will define the success of each uh, sugarcane research strategy. 
Before I go on and thank you, uh, I wish to invite those of you involved in pathology and entomology uh, to the uh, next pathology and entomology workshop of the ISSCT, which will be held in Salta, Argentina. I promise you it's going to be a very interesting program, and I urge you to come and visit us. So thank you very much for your attention.